Hi everyone, welcome. As you can see, I've already got my blue glove on and I've got the worm bin we're going to feed today out on the table. Before we get started, let's just really quickly go over this little batch of information I put together for us. It's, it's a batch of African night crawlers that have been around for 175 days now. And that's the same as 25 weeks. It's quite a, quite a good age for a bin, if you ask me. Oddly enough, it's only gotten 13 feedings. A lot of times by the time I reach an age around here, I've already got at least three or four, maybe five additional feedings to that. 13 is not that much. Might explain why, well, I don't know. Might explain why this system doesn't seem quite at capacity yet. I, uh, I was in here nine days ago. The last time we came in here, we, we tried to get the worms to work on some weird material that we've been trying to keep isolated from the rest of the contents of the bin. We kept it in one of these little red net bags, kind of red net, ooh, the kind of red bag that you get some produce in sometimes, maybe a few onions or something like that. So I've got a few, got a few worms hanging out on this plastic bag here, so I'm just going to fold it in half so that the moisture remains cozy for them under there, and that things remain a little bit dark for them. And hopefully they'll stay put and not try to crawl away. This is, I mean, I don't really get the worms hanging out right on the top very often. But in a case like this where plastic is enabling the recirculation of moisture right beneath it, it's not too surprising to find worms coming up for that moisture. Moisture was the main concern in this bin last time, I believe. And that's the reason we place that plastic covering on it. Up until then, I don't think we were using plastic coverings. I, um, I don't know. Once again, moisture topics. These worms are far from moist. Looks like a couple worms tried to take a little stroll up the side of the container and got stranded there and dried out into jerky. It's not a nice thing to see, but for whatever reason, worms do that sometimes. I don't know if they just got like a little short circuit in their little pea brains or what the reason is for doing that. Kind of interesting, you know, considering all the worms that came up for the moisture, they didn't really do a whole lot with the paper out here on the top surface. Maybe that's because they've got plenty of other bedding materials down in the bin to, to nibble on. Maybe they're only interested in the moisture coming up to the top. And it really isn't a great deal of moisture. I mean, I'm glad to feel things are cool and damp, but a lot of times right beneath the plastic, you can almost find puddles. And I could see little bits of glossy moisture on this paper, glistening a little bit. So it's not like it's, yeah, I don't know. Either way, you get the idea. There is moisture collecting on the top surface due to the plastic coverings. That was the reason for all those worms hanging out on the top surface. Hopefully we managed to clear them all off. This is something I like to do. Lately I've been doing it pretty regularly in almost all my bins is just using a nice natural leafy top covering, sprinkling of bedding. And there again, it's not the type of bedding that gets a whole lot of action since it's out on the surface. I mean, these are surface dwelling worms, I believe. Most of our composting worms do most of their work up in the top few layers of the material that they inhabit. I'm trying to remember what this may have been here. Kind of clumped together stuff. And I'm wondering if this is my worm chow. Hmm. I had some interesting dialogue with one of my viewers about worm chow. Since I'm kind of a new adopter, I'm always kind of looking for tips on do's and don'ts and easy pitfalls to avoid. And it did seem like um, there was this potential of worm chow getting sour and it was just weird because the the smell while I was breaking up those little chunks of the stuff did seem a little bit weird, maybe a little bit sour, but it wasn't much. So this is the, um, let me just explain the red bag because when I moved these worms into here all those weeks ago, 25 weeks ago, the material from the system that they were coming from all got screened out. It was really nice, beautiful castings they left behind for me, but... There was a little bit of um, there was a little bit of material mixed into that, which I was a little bit concerned about. 
So I left it in this bag. I didn't want to just discard it and toss it because it was really mixed in with a whole bunch of nice castings that were just not really ready for harvest, I believe, at that time because of the stuff that was littered in it. So I left it all in this bag here. And if I'm not mistaken, we were starting to see some signs of it vanishing. Wow, interesting. So we had, this is kind of a throwback to two feedings ago. Two feedings ago, we had thrown an entire tomato right out on top of this bag in the hopes that the tomato would expel its juices and cause a lot of worm traffic down within the red bag to see if it'll possibly prompt the breakdown of that questionable material. And I would have to say that at first glance, I'm not really seeing any of it. That's not true. Here's some. So I guess the main thing about this stuff was that, I guess, first of all, if it was plain old paper, it would be long gone. So that's what makes me think it's, think it's something else. And then the weird thing about it was how I could... Ugh, so I tore it at that time, but like, it's weird how it has this unusual springiness to it. But I certainly don't see it in the amount that I had seen it in the past. But once again, that could just be because we've driven a whole bunch of worm activity down into this little bag and moistened it considerably by putting a lot of food right out on top of it. But it's so weird, you know, because you look at it and the edges are perfectly straight, clean cut, not even a one nibble of a worm bite on it. And it's so weird, too, how it sort of stays, kind of keeps springing back down. So, I don't know. There's a little piece that I threw over there before. Maybe it is just safer to keep it in that red bag. And if at some point we remain suspicious about it and we see no further activity or signs of it breaking down, who knows? Maybe it'll just be time to let this stuff dry a little bit, shake out whatever castings are mixed in with the stuff. And hopefully the red bag will just continue to isolate it from... The surrounding materials but I'm not in a hurry I figured let's just keep at this test to see if that stuff actually breaks down my hope is that it is actually something that will break down and that I didn't let some sort of weird plastic or something slip into my bedding because this wouldn't have been the only place that that bedding would have been used I mean you know I keep a good supply of this stuff on hand I even replenished my supply yesterday so whatever Whatever it is that snuck into my uh, my bedding mix would also eventually be showing signs in other bins too. So whatever, I think enough time spent on this unusual little thing. But the other day when I was preparing some food, when was it yesterday? I pulled out a tomato the day before from the refrigerator. It had been placed in the refrigerator hopefully to keep it from spoiling maybe give it a little bit more shelf life but you know then it sat out for a day and i guess that whole cooling and warming didn't do the tomato that good i mean the tomato didn't seem that bad but when i you know went to the sink to start rinsing it all of its skin peeled off so i had a big pile of tomato skin in my hand and oddly enough the tomato was now naked <laughs> so my idea was to come in here with this tomato and kind of do a revival of what we did initially to try to prompt worm activity down into this thing. And, you know, I don't always know what I'm giving my worms. Because <laughs> what you see here is something that was contributed by my mom. And I think we were talking about what we think it's called in Hungarian, but nobody knew what to call it in English. So whatever. Hopefully the worms like it, whatever the heck it is. <laughs> All right, so the thing that we used last time to try to promote worm activity down into the feeding area was obviously a pepper, <laughs> which still feels quite firm and hardly getting there, so that's weird. The main thing was a whole bunch of yummy pumpkin. So some of the pumpkin was just stacked up on top of the, the bag to try to prompt worm activity over there. The rest of it was placed over here. I think after nine days, we're not going to see any signs of that. I'm also glad to see that the moisture in here is sort of on the road to recovery. It doesn't feel like anything's dry in here anymore. In a way, it does feel like it could use more moisture, but it doesn't, know, you know, doesn't feel like it needs triage, you know, or 
anything to really fix the situation. It feels pretty nice. So, all right, I think we got ourselves a pretty nice little hole down here to plop today's feeding into. We always need to leave a little bit of extra space down in the hole for that huge red bag, but I'd like to try to maximize the space down in the middle for us to place today's feeding into. All right. I'm going to give these little guys a moment to just clear out of view, and then we can start piling in their yummy morsels. So we're going to use all this used um, bedding that was out here on the surface. We're going to drop that down under where the food's going to get placed in. But I'd also like to try to collect up some of these leftovers we encountered along the way. This tomato peel, this little jalapeno for whatever reason has gotten no attention. So I think I'll just crack the side of it open and let the worms in. This thing, man. Mango seed. The seed that was inside this husk is long gone, and the husk is almost gone too at this point. But if you ever handle one of these things when it's still fresh, you'll know how tough one of those is. So you'll appreciate how far along it's broken down so far. Let me just really excavate this hole and shove things up as high as I can get them at this point, because I do want to... Oh boy. <laughs> I just found like a little jumble of bedding, basically. Maybe some little bit of pumpkin still stuck in there, but... A, Good amount of worms just came out of that little bundle. Really trying to pile up the existing castings and close to complete material up high so that we can use that to cover up with at the end. I uh, I do feel like I need a good bit of height, you know, because if we're going to put that entire tomato out on top of this thing to try to get it all juicy and continue the worm action in it, Try and imagine the tomato being here and us needing to come up almost to the rim to cover things up in here. So perhaps if we um, move a lot of this seasoned bedding that was scattered across the surface down into the feeding area and then just give the whole shebang another nudge outwards, maybe we can give ourselves the depth we feel we need to make this happen. I guess the only real way to make that happen, though, is to almost level this thing off and spread it out. Luckily, the bag's pretty big and flexible enough to let me do that, because then this way I don't need to, you know, go too crazy. Trying to cover things up at the end, and, you know, it's frozen solid. There's not much I could do about how much volume it requires to be placed in here. It is what it is. I mean, if it was already... Okay, sorry, wormies. Whatever wormies I'm placing this frozen thing on top of. I don't know. I've got a whole bunch of paper towel and whatnot around here. Maybe we just give these little wormies a little break by not having this big frozen mass <laughs> stuck straight to them. And, you know, I've been sort of hanging on to all these coffee filters here. And in with uh, the foods that they're getting, there's even more coffee filters in here. So I'd really like to get these things into action. So I'm just going to spread them out down here within our feeding area. And I think these are going to make for nice little playgrounds for these worms to huddle into. You can see every time we encountered a little bundle of shredded paper, there was always a good number of worms just hanging out down in it for whatever reason. So they seem to like it. So, well, I've got my nice little prepared bedding and we will use that later. I thought that a whole bunch of this would be a good foundation for the feeding. Stuff's just been sitting out here on my bench for quite some time now, and I've been really looking to put it into service and give it to the worms. So I think by using it here the way we just did, we've um, created a really nice foundation of bedding for these little guys. This thing, man, this is interesting. I'm really curious to see what this thing's going to look like next time we check in here. Usually when we have like the stem end of something like this, we'll have like 
all the soft stuff nibbled away and then like the sort of starburst coming out of the stem end so that's always kind of an interesting thing to see something like this that's more near the leafy bits probably all get chewed up one two three but I really don't know this is not the type of material that I normally give my worms so I'm not really sure what to expect so if any of you've ever fed this to your worms and if you know what it is or what it's called in English <laughs> please let me know I'm curious so now I'm just going to bring in a little bit of my pulverized eggshell here for a system like this has been fed quite a number of times already chances are I've already been applying grit into here numerous times and then it's not that important but I usually got a good amount of the stuff on hand and I like to be generous so I usually dish it out even when it seems like it's not all that necessary okay this is where I thought that bringing in some of my prepared bedding would be a nice material into which we can then sprinkle a little bit of worm chow I got some advice on applying worm chow and using worm chow and I guess maybe um, maybe it'll just teach me to be a little bit more cautious with the stuff because it does seem like it has some potential pitfalls to it when you use it in a worm bin if you're not careful and I had no idea I always figured it was just whatever you know so I guess the the main thing is to not apply it too much and to I guess keep it um, near the surface I guess I don't know I'm just still kind of trying to build a routine that's you know good for the worms versus being bad for the worms <laughs> and I do try to incorporate all the feedback I get but you know I uh, I guess my mind is like a sieve <laughs> easy in easy out so I do remember bits and pieces of the great advice people give me, but sometimes I just end up doing stuff that's completely contrary to it. So I can imagine some of the viewers and people that have given me valuable advice just sitting out there and saying, oh my gosh, what is he doing? I thought he knew better. I probably do know better. Sometimes I'm just distracted. <laughs> and you know, sometimes I just allow things to remain a little bit suboptimal in some of my systems too, almost deliberately. Not because I'm trying to cause harm to the worms. I think at best, or at worst, the worst thing that I'm really triggering by doing things suboptimally is possibly extending the time it takes for a bin to make it to the finish line. And in my wormery, it's A-OK. -okay, you know, I'm not in a hurry usually. And I'm usually more just in, more interested in observing what kind of weird little things happen if I just turn the screws a little bit and, you know, change a variable or two along the way. So I think we're almost done here. This is when I want to be a little bit careful to make sure I'm not inadvertently taking a little worm for a ride with me on my glove. But I think we can cover up here. The one thing that I did not do is hang on to a one single coffee filter, <laughs> which we would normally position right down the middle as our feeding zone indicator. I'm just wondering if it would be easy enough for me to just sort of probe down into the hole, <laughs> reclaim one, to not serve as bedding, but at this point to serve as top covering. Now, you know, there's something about all those leaves out on top. I'd really like to put a little bit more of that down. So let's grab these momentarily, set them aside. I'm going to sprinkle the top with some leaves. Once again, I'm in fully stocked mode. Yesterday, I not only made prepared shredded paper bedding, cardboard bedding, really. I also replenished my supply of leaves. Yesterday was one of those days where I didn't film a video. Didn't have to. My schedule didn't require me to check in on any of my systems yesterday, but, but I did have time to come down here a couple times to tend to some of my housekeeping issues and just other things which demand your time it's not always just playing around with the wormies sometimes you got to do some real work too <laughs> all right now we can come back in with the feeding zone indicator and these top covering sheets of paper and i guess my only thought was that maybe a little bit more moisture wouldn't have hurt in here because i don't know all these leaves going in dry might not be that bad because the prepared bedding we're using here 
has quite a high moisture content to it and the veggies we're putting in there as they thaw Philly mint moisture too so the plastic covering will protect us from losing whatever moisture is in here so I think we're just gonna take our chances with this the way it is even though it did seem to me like we could have possibly applied a little bit of moisture I'm just gonna go ahead and see how things go in here just by letting the moisture that the foods bring with them be the the moisture that compensates for the dry stuff that was put in so hopefully it ends in a good good result but that's it for our check-in today with our african night crawlers and i'm really really hoping that that stuff that's in the red bag will eventually break down and be gone but i really don't know what to expect at this point it's been quite a while you know it's very slow going if it is going to break down maybe it's just going to come out but for now that's it for today's video everyone thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed it if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's always very much appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel all right everyone have a great day thanks so much for watching bye, -bye.